Hello and welcome to this ninth in a series of instructional videos about the ease of access environment in Windows 10. Now the ease of access environment is a place where we can make some system changes to more personalize the window experience for ourselves. So for example, if you had a visual or a hearing or a physical disability, this is the environment where we can make a lot of those changes. Now before we go on, I'd like to ask you to hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, then please give us a thumbs up and also hit the notification icon bell to be notified of any future videos. Now, this particular video, we're going to be looking at the keyboard in ease of access and the features that we can change to better interact with that keyboard to make life easier for ourselves. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the keyboard feature in ease of access. As always, we're going to come down to the bottom left. There's an icon that looks like a window. That's often referred to as the start button. And if you hover the mouse pointer over that, you'll see that the word start appears. So we're going to left click on start. And then we're going to left click on the icon on the far left here that looks like a cog. And if we hover the mouse over that, it says settings. So we're going to left click on that. Now at this point, I want to say everything is a left click unless I tell you otherwise. There is one point in this video where I do do a right click and that is purely for demonstration purposes. So left click. Now in this Windows settings environment, this is our springboard to where we can make a host of system changes affecting how we interact with Windows operating system. If you do make any changes, I strongly recommend keeping a notepad handy. That way you can make a note of the original settings and what you've changed those settings to. That way you can always revert back to the original if you're not happy. Don't have to remember it, you've written it down because it's easy to forget. Now we're going to be going to the ease of access environment. We've talked about video, sorry, vision. If you've missed those tutorial videos, please go back and check them out. Same again for the hearing section. Again, you can go back and check those out. We're looking at the keyboard. So we click on keyboard. And we have several options here and I'll just quickly scroll down to the bottom. So you can see there's quite a few options that we have here. As always, when we use these toggle keys to save us coming back into this environment, we can make a note of this keyboard shortcut. And this will come in handy in a moment and I'll show you why. But for first, we're going to use this toggle switch to turn on the Use your device without a physical keyboard. Now, why would you want to use your device without a physical keyboard? Several reasons. One of them could be that the keyboard is damaged in some way. The other one could be that you have a physical disability, so you can't reach the keyboard, but you do have a touch screen or you have your mouse. So let's have a look at this. Let's turn this on. So this is our on-screen keyboard. You'll see it's the classic QWERTY keyboard. These are the keys here. We're not going to discuss those. That can be for another video or you can experiment with those. We're just going to concentrate on the bare bone basics at the moment. So let's open up Notepad. And we're going to type something, we're going to type, let's say Mary had a little lamb. So we would use the mouse, we would left click, and everything's a left click. The shift key, now you notice all these word letters are uppercase. So we're going to click M. Now you notice that they've all reverted back to lowercase. So we can continue. So we're going to type Mary, then space, had... 
space, A, space. Now, you may have noticed that the words up here appear. These are suggested text, so it knows that I've typed Mary had a, so it's offering the words little. Let's assume the word little was not there. What we would do is we would type the L for little, and you'll now notice that all of these words along here begin with the letter L. Oh look, little is here. So instead of typing the whole word out, we can just click on this, and this would save a lot of time. So Mary had a little, now we're going to type lamb, and I nearly used the physical keyboard there. <laughs> L-A-M-B. Now I might as well hit B because yeah, I could choose the word lamb up here, but I'm already here, so lamb. So that's using the, the on-screen keyboard. There are other reasons why you would want to use an on-screen keyboard, but they're outside the remix of this video. Let's uh, close this down. I'm going to click close. And you'll notice that also turns it off from here. I'm going to come down to use sticky keys. Now, sticky keys are going to come in handy for when we use this shortcut. We're going to use this shortcut as we're meant to use it. So it's telling us that we have to press down the window key and the control key and the letter O at the same time. So that's going to require us to use two hands, three fingers, or one hand if you've got a span of fingers wide enough to hit all three. So let's assume that we're going to do this. We're going to press window control and the O key at the same time. Here we go. That's opened up the keyboard here. And we're going to do that again to close it. So it's going to be the window key, the control and the O. Sorry, I was pressing the zero then by mistake. There we go. So we pressed all three keys at the same time to close it. Let's assume we couldn't do that. So we would use sticky keys. Now we can do exactly the same thing using one finger. Now we can press the window key, then the control key, then the letter O to open it. So to close it again, same again, we would press the window key, then the control key, then the O to close it. So that's, that's handy if we have some kind of disability or something to, to do that. Now we have use toggle keys. So play a sound whenever you press the caps lock, number lock or scroll lock. Now what we're going to do, because I have to plug in this lapel microphone, so you won't be able to hear these tones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to audio and I'm going to turn on visual alerts. In this case, I'm going to use full screen. So let's come back to keyboard. If you missed that, check out the video. I've done a whole video just on that section. Right now, when I use these toggle keys, at the, I'm going to turn this on. Normally, you would hear a tone. But I've chosen for it to flash the screen instead because, like I said, we can't hear the tone because this microphone's plugged in. So I'm going to press num lock. Screen flashed. So if I was to use the caps lock, it flashes the screen. Whenever I use a toggle key, it's going to flash the screen or you're going to hear the tone if you don't use the thing. So I'm going to turn off the flash screen for now. So we're going to turn off the toggle key and we're going to be looking at use filter keys. Now a filter key is going to be particularly great if you have a physical disability again. So let's say for example you have a shake or a tremor in your hands and you would accidentally hit the same key several times. Makes typing a nightmare. Filter keys 
will make our life a lot easier for that reason. So let me show you something before I turn it on. I'm going to come down below Mary Had a Little Lamb and I'm just going to press Q. Now I'm sure we've all had a bit of fun with this. We've pressed and held down a letter key just to see how far we could go with it. I'm going to come down one more line but this time I'm going to turn on use filter keys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press and hold down the letter Q and my finger is pressed and held down. I'm not releasing it. It's still on there. It's not scrolling across the screen. It's just staying put until I take my finger off and put my finger back on again. Again, nothing's happening. Again, I'm pressing and holding and nothing's happening. So if you add a, a tremor, we can change that. So that turns on that feature there. We're going to turn off use filter keys. Change how keyboard shortcuts work. Now this is a section where I am going to be right clicking. But first I'm going to show you before I turn this on. We're back on my desktop here. Now if I was to right click, so that's the button on the right side of the scroll wheel on your mouse. We have this drop down feature come down and you'll notice it says view, sort by, refresh and so forth. None of these have any kind of an underline at all. But all of these have a, a, key, a function key that we can use. So let's go back to here. So keyboard shortcuts are also known as a, a, a function key or hotkey and so forth. Several different names. So let's turn this on. Now let's go back to the desktop. I'm going to right click again and remember this is just to show you. If you look closely you'll see that certain letters are underlined. That means if you press the function key, the FN key, and the letter that is underlined that would bring that feature up. So let's say that we wanted to rearrange these icons. I would press the function and I would press the O and that would bring up another section here as to what I wanted to do here. But this is outside the remit of the video. I just wanted to, to see what that was. Print screen shortcuts. So let's turn on the print screen shortcut. So I'm going to press print screen and at the very top it's giving us a snip. They call it a snip. We can choose part of the screen or a uh, whole screen or whatever. Let's stick with the traditional whole screen. Full screen snip. I've just taken the picture of the screen and it shows a picture down here. So I'm going to click on this picture in the bottom right. This is the picture I've just taken of my desktop. We can make some alterations here, but that is a different story altogether. Then we can click save and you would click save as and you would give it a name, but this automatically gives you a name to use. We're not going to do that. Just wanted you to be aware of that feature. Print screen is great. Uh, so turn on print screen shortcut it makes life a bit easier. So if, let's say you had an error message pop up on the screen. Quickly hit print screen and then you can save that image. So a technician can see what's wrong. They can read it for themselves instead of you writing a long string of numbers down. Bottom bit here, leave those uh, ticked. Uh, you can play around with it to your heart content. I just want you to be aware of everything here. So that was your keyboard. We have some other settings we can go to over here. But again, they're outside the remit of this video. Have a look at those. Play around with those to your heart's content. Make a note of any settings before you change them. So I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching.